You are listening to Three Kitchens Podcast, a member of the Alberta Podcast Network, locally grown, community supported. We release a new episode every Tuesday. Come join us for a new recipe and a good story. Today's episode is brought to you by The Pulse. Want to start your day informed? Check out The Pulse, Taproot's daily news briefing. The Pulse tells you what you need to know about Edmonton every weekday morning. You'll get short, informative updates about what's happening at City Hall, plus coverage of business, tech, food, the arts, and more. You'll also get a little bit of whimsy from features such as A Moment in History and the weekly podcast pick. And it's free. Sign up today at taprootedmonton.ca slash pulse. That's taprootedmonton.ca slash pulse. Hey everybody, welcome to Three Kitchens Podcast. I am your host, Heather Dyer. And just before we get going with today's episode and a really great recipe, I want to introduce you to my friend, Jenny Chan. We asked Jenny uh, to send us her thoughts on traditions and foods that she and her family enjoy around Chinese New Year. Because when this episode comes out, Chinese New Year is just around the corner. So thank you, Jenny. We really appreciate it. And to anyone who's celebrating, Happy New Year. Hi. Thanks for um, inviting me out to uh, give you my experience of growing up in Canada and celebrating Chinese New Year. It's definitely quite different than um, the celebrations in China and Asia. And my parents grew up in Canada as teenagers, so they assimilated to the North American culture quite quickly, but they still have a lot of superstitions and things that we needed to follow. So I will name you kind of the top few things uh, that we needed to do prior to Chinese New Year and for actual Chinese New Year Day. The first thing before Chinese New Year is that we needed to clean the house to get ready uh, and be fresh for the New Year coming. Uh, Secondly, if we had any debt that we were supposed to pay that, um, because we don't want to go into the New Year with, you know, debt. The whole thing is having luck and and bringing in money and prosperity and, and health. Uh, the third thing is is having a haircut before Chinese New Year. We want to start the new year fresh, cut off any uh, bad luck that may have happened, and start the new year with uh, you know possibly maybe even a new look, but just really a, a nice new fresh way of starting the new year. Another thing that we would like to do before Chinese New Year is to decorate the house. Not only do you clean the house, but do you, you decorate it in little good luck sayings. You can usually buy them at the grocery mart with Chinese characters, all uh, saying different meanings, posting them on the wall and by the doors, just to, again, bring in those really lucky phrases and, and, and luck to our house. For Chinese New Year's Eve, we would always have um, a big family dinner or at least get together with family and have numerous different dishes. You know, there would be at least some fish. There would be possibly some Chinese dumplings. There would be a whole chicken, which just, you know, symbolizes uh, unity, wholeness. There's also a type of Chinese New Year cake called Ningo. Um, It's a glutinous rice cake, which I know you've tried to make, which is awesome. This is just basically a cake that just is supposed to, again, give you more prosperity uh, in your business and improve in your life. Another item would be having some type of noodles, which would represent uh, longevity um, because the noodle is long and it would a beginning and maybe a, a never ending type of um, meaning symbolization for that. As for Chinese New Year's Day, um, it was always nice because in keeping in line with everything new, we were always supposed to wear something new. It doesn't have to be a new outfit, but you know, it could be a new shirt, new pants, new shoes. I'll tell you something funny. One year, I think I probably didn't have anything new, but I had some new underwear, so I wore new underwear. <laughs> As well as, uh, as first thing when we wake up, we would eat these Chinese candies. Uh, It could be dried fruit, just um, having something sweet uh, when you wake up first thing in the morning. Some other people, my friends actually uh, ordered a whole roast pig. That that depends on how many people can eat it. Otherwise, sometimes we'll just have like a pork dish. Pork, you know, represents having a rich life, more wealth, 
strength. I'm just guessing, but maybe because in, in China they don't have pork that often. So if you're able to access that, then, you know, that's something very special. Another good like uh, item is, you know, having anything round to eat that day as well, such as oranges, because so orange in Chinese is chang and chang, I guess, sounds like the word for success. Um, so even though it's not the same pronunciation, but it's very similar. So they always have these little things that symbolizes something else. So if anyone doesn't know, also the number eight is a very lucky number in Chinese because eight in Chinese is bat, which sounds like fat, which means luck and wealth. So along with the new, you know, clothing item and um, candy, we would, the most exciting thing obviously would be, you know, receiving the red envelopes from our parents and elders with money in it. And they would be wishing us good luck for the next year for us to grow and, you know, be healthy. And in turn, we also have to wish them good luck and a, a long life and most important health and, you know, in, ensuring there's good fortune. So we're always wishing each other um, with these little good news or good luck sayings. And also in, in, on the new, uh, Chinese New Year Day, we were not to ever cry <laughs> and we were never to fight with our siblings. Um, that was considered bad luck. Again, the same thing. You want the day to be positive, nothing negative. So that was um, one thing that uh, I remember when I was younger, if we ever started fighting or crying, my mom would be angry but nice being, this is not the day or time to fight. Um, and so we would pretty much have to resolve our um, any type of disagreement pretty much right away. Thank you so much, Jenny, for sharing your family's traditions around celebrating Chinese New Year in Canada. Uh, we really appreciate you sharing that with us and our listeners. Now, we hope that you enjoy this recipe that Heather's about to share with us. And Happy New Year. Okay, well, I have a recipe for you that it just occurred to me that I was going to make it. And I thought, well, why don't we do it for the podcast? Because everybody will want to make it because it's yummy. Ooh. Um, this is something I've made many times everybody likes it um and i think you will too have you had before chinese uh, lion's head pork meatballs no i don't know why they're called lion's head but if you were to google it there's many recipes it's ground pork and, and typically ground pork is a bit less expensive than beef right so if yeah. you were at the store and you're like oh the ground beef's kind of high priced today but the pork is on sale or the pork is just less money yeah. But maybe you're not sure what to do with it because what, how many things you do with ground pork? I don't know. Personally, I don't, it's not my favorite. So I, it's not usually my go to. It's something that I usually do 50 50 when I make a meatball with beef. Uh, sometimes I put it in burgers and it also goes into my chili because it adds a bit of fat. It's got the fat, it's got that different flavor with it. Yeah. But it's usually something that just is with beef. So I'm right. excited to do something solo. So this is just ground pork. I have made these meatballs with half beef, half pork, and okay. I didn't like it as much. I actually like them better with the pork, and I don't know why, but it works. Ooh. Um, this method, I think there's different ways you can make these, but the method that I have used and really like is steamed. So you're oh. going to make up your meatballs, and you're going to brown them lightly, and then you're going to steam them. And it's an extra step because you brown them and now you're steaming. And depending on the size of the pot or the steamer you've got, yeah. sometimes you can't like load them all in and it makes quite a bit. So like you can't just load them all. You got to do it in batches, which takes some time. Right. But you get a lot of meatballs out of it. And there's something just, I think the steaming makes them really moist and yeah, they're mixed with water okay. and panko breadcrumbs. And what I think is the key ingredient is finely chopped water chestnuts. So all of these things oh, together yeah. make a yeah. really fluffy, moist meatball with that little tiny bit of crunch from the water chestnut. Yeah, I don't know. Something about it really works and it's really yummy. And even my kids are like, oh, are these the meatballs with the water chestnuts? Because they really like that texture and that they're just different. Yeah, it's got the, the thing that they like. <laughs> yeah, it just somehow it really, they do really like water chestnuts. It's kind of a funny it ingredient. It's kind of funny. Because it doesn't have a lot of flavor. 
No. It has a weird texture. They do, but if you dice them up, they're the perfect thing. Like I have a spinach dip that I make, or you can like make it in like a bread bowl, or you can stuff it into little mini pita pockets. Mm. And it's got the water chestnuts in there. Mm -hmm. And that's my, that used to be my go-to appetizer that I would bring to a potluck. Yeah, yeah. Because I loved that spinach dip with the water mm. chestnuts. So I love yeah. the crunch in there. I love um, spinach dip too. Can you make me some? Oh, okay. <laughs> awesome. Okay. <laughs> so easy. I like the idea of steaming because it reminds me of when we steamed dumplings mm -hmm. and it had the raw meat inside. It gave it a very, it, it does have a different like texture and yeah. the puffy fluffiness that you just, yeah, it's not comparable. Yeah. Something about the way it cooks, it keeps it really soft. I don't know. Mm -hmm. So there's um, also you use, oh God, I'm going to say this wrong. Shoshing wine. What, how do you pronounce that one? <laughs> like you'll know I'm, I'm not sure why you're asking me <laughs> neither of us knows how to pronounce that I'm if anybody's not listened to the cotton candy martini episode of speakeasy <sighs> you will know all the different wrong ways that I pronounce things <laughs> yeah Aaron's googling oh Shaoxing wine Shaoxing okay Shaoxing wine thank you a uh, google <laughs> thank you google <laughs> And I was thinking about that. I never really thought about it before, but you know how there's theory about using an alcohol, like a wine or a sake with the pork kind of takes away the pork flavor, that bit of something that is it's really that meatiness meaty. That's yeah. weird. Yeah. So I wonder if that's part of the reason for putting the wine into this meatball. Mm. I don't know. Maybe that's part of why it tastes so darn good. I'm not sure, but I have an idea as well. Oh, I'm not sure how this is going to turn out, but I have made these meatballs many times. They're really popular. I'm going to make the meatballs, but I also had an idea of dipping aside a little bit of the meat, not putting in the breadcrumbs, which turns it into a meatball, mm -hmm. and using a just a store-bought frozen puff pastry and turning oh. it into like a sausage roll with this lion's head pork in a sausage roll. Ooh. Worth a shot. Right? So like making your own own filling for it. Like my own sausage, essentially, yeah. but inspired by a lion's head meatball. Ooh, this sounds like a good crossover of things. Yeah, so I'm going to do both. I'm going to do the meatball because it actually, what you start with a pound of meat, but by the time you put in your panko crumbs, your chestnuts, water, and it's like mixed, mixed, mixed it actually kind of doubles yeah. the meat, right? So... You, you can make a lot of meatballs with this. It says 10 big meatballs, but um, that would be quite a large. <laughs> that sounds like a huge meatball. Yeah. Some of this is mm. going to be what I've made tried and true and then a little bit of an experiment. So what do you usually serve the meatballs with when you make them? Usually rice okay. and some kind of steamed or stir fried veggie. So you don't make a sauce with it? Um... They're really good on their own. They're just honestly. good on their own. Ah. Um, but you could, you absolutely could. Like if there's a, I'd have to look up, I don't know what would be a good sauce, but. Um, no, I'm just wondering because sometimes or often meatballs come like in a sauce. Yeah, yeah. Like These a ones... Swedish meatball is what I'm thinking mm -hmm. back to. But yeah, just by itself. Oh. Yeah, just by itself. But that's a good consideration. I might think up something mm. and certainly for a sausage roll or a sausage bite kind of thing it would be nice to have a little dip so maybe oh ooh, even that spicy mustard <gasps> would be really delicious with that ooh. oh this sounds fun mm -hmm. i like new different meatballs yeah. i'm a lazy meatball maker is what i like to call myself because i make them the cookie scoop styles and i bake them for 10 yeah. minutes in a 400 degree oven and I can never get them to not stick to the pan mm. when I make them in, and then they break up. I, I haven't had great success. Yeah. I know trying to roll them over and brown the other side, they get stuck. I know. And then they, and then they're not like balls anymore. Then they become cylinders yeah. and <laughs> they crumble. And I haven't had great success making meatballs in a pan. But I like this idea of the pan and the steam. Well, I will I will make you some lion's head yeah. meatballs. 
This sounds I good. I was just looking at the ground pork at the store and was like, hmm, this is cheaper. I wonder what I could do with it. Mm -hmm. But I didn't pick up any. So you read my mind. Well, try the meatballs first and see if you like them before you commit. Oh, Because then you might have sure. the pork and you'll be like, now what do I do with it? I didn't like those lion head meatballs. <laughs> I don't think that'll happen. I'm pretty confident. I trust you. <laughs> even my kids like them. So um... <laughs> if even the kids like them. This episode is brought to you by the Alberta Podcast Network, locally grown, community supported. This podcast shout out goes to It's a Conspiracy. Andrew, Greg, and Charlie discuss the beliefs behind selected conspiracy theories, alternative accounts, legends, myths, and more. I listened to an episode a while back in which they debated the theory around the cilantro gene. You know that one that causes a person to think cilantro tastes like soap? Well, I just want to say my co-host Aaron might strongly disagree with calling that a conspiracy. The cilantro aversion is real, you guys. They also do a little segment about what they're drinking, which I appreciate, for some great Alberta brewery and distillery recommendations. So if you're a fan of weird news and wacky stories of all kinds, as I am... Go listen to It's a Conspiracy. And while you're there, check out all the other shows at albertapodcastnetwork.com. Welcome back. We've had meatballs. Let's talk about Chinese lion's head pork meatballs and sausage rolls. Exactly. And the sausage rolls. Don't yep. forget. And you made a and sauce. A dip. <laughs> okay. Okay. So let's talk first about these meatballs. So, okay, it's a bit of a laundry list of ingredients. It's okay. It looks daunting because there's like a few things that go in here, um, but there's nothing weird or that you wouldn't probably have in your pantry or couldn't easily get. So don't be intimidated by the long, long list. A pound or 500 grams approximately of ground pork. You're going to put that in a big bowl and add four tablespoons of water and mix it with a spatula until the water has been incorporated into the meat. The first time I read this recipe, I was like, but how is meat soaking up water? Like what the, how does that even work? But it somehow it does. I don't know. I don't know how it works. Don't question it. Just go with it, right? Go with it. <laughs> then to that, you're going to add the, as I'm probably going to pronounce wrong, Shaoxing, I think you say Shaoxing wine or sake, even like cooking wine, any kind of, some kind of wine, I think is what you want to have in here. Yeah. Light soy sauce, dark soy sauce, salt sugar grated ginger cornstarch and scallion or mm. green onion chopped up you know mix all that in there then add water chestnuts and eggs so you've got 12 to 15 water chestnuts i find that this the can right i can't think of what the measurement is but you know it's like a low can oh it's like the smaller are those four ounce cans or something i can't remember exactly or six they're smaller <laughs> Yeah. It's like a typical can that you get water chestnuts in. They're not usually a giant can, right? No. So don't worry about counting it so much. Just buy the, the smallish can and then just chop them all up as into fine, like a mince. Okay. And three eggs. And you're going to mix water chestnuts and eggs. And what you're trying to do is get like between the water chestnuts and the egg, you're like creating volume in your pork. So okay. you're trying to make your pound of pork stretch really far with this recipe. Then you're going to add in some panko, and that again is mm. going to like bulk it up, right? Yeah. Panko breadcrumbs or any kind of breadcrumbs if you don't have panko. Uh, about a cup of panko in there. Mix it all up, a little bit of sesame oil, and then it becomes like a paste. Mm. It's not meant to be okay, like thick. In fact, if it, it should be barely able to form a meatball. Like it should be runny kind of. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's like... It's kind of weird and you think, how is this going to be a meatball? But you want it to be really soft. Okay. And if it's not, you need to add more water, a tablespoon at a time, completely stir it in, check okay. it again. I've made this many times. I've always added more water like, okay. every time. Or if yours happens to be too runny, put more panko. Okay. Now, I'm just going to stop here because I'm going to say to make the sausage rolls, which we'll talk about in a minute, I kept out a cup of... Okay meat before I added the egg and the panko because I didn't oh. want the egg and the panko in my sausage roll. I decided right. I wanted it to be a bit looser, more like a sausage. Like a crumblier. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So if you want to make a few little sausage rolls, maybe to munch on while your meatballs are steaming, which is what I did. <laughs> nice. Keep that one cup out before you've added in your panko, but you definitely want your water chestnuts in there. 
Yeah. That's like the best part. Okay. 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 So set that aside. Choose okay. the size of meatball you want to do. The recipe initially is for large. I think traditionally maybe they're large meatballs. Mm -hmm. And they use about a third of a cup. Oh, wow. That's huge. Okay. Yeah. Um, and that's why the recipe says it makes 10 large meatballs. But I make them quite a bit smaller. I would do like two tablespoons maybe. Like you're kind of just eyeballing it if you're me. <laughs> If you're someone else, you can <laughs> measure it out. Weigh it on a scale. Sure. Yeah. That, you know what? A mounded cookie scoop. There you might, go. You just eyeball it. As long as they're roughly the same size so that they'll cook at the same time, it doesn't matter. Make it the size you want. Exactly. <laughs> now, to make your meatballs, um, you're going to put these loose, <laughs> squishy meatballs mm -hmm. uh, into a skillet with oil, warm like warm you want to brown lightly brown them just so that to the point where they hold together and okay. flip it hopefully you'll be able to flip it so once it's sort of set on one side you flip it over okay brown it a little bit to set until you can like scoop it up they're still quite fragile like these are not sturdy meatballs okay um, and do you do this in a non-stick pan or do you do this in cast iron or what kind of pan are you using for your I meatballs used, i used a non-stick skillet okay. for this but I have made them before with a cast iron pan. Okay. So it's just easier clean up with the nonstick one, I find. Right, right. I've, I have a hard time ever getting meatballs to not fall apart. Yeah. And stick so, to the pan and everything. And they, yeah, I'm always scraping and uh, it's always a disaster. So <laughs> not with these ones. I don't know why. Okay. <laughs> know why, but it seems to work. Okay. So you've lightly browned them carefully take them out of the pan and set them aside and because you probably have to do it in batches because you don't yep. want them sticking together then heat up your steamer whatever kind of steamer you've got get your water boiling and then put your meatballs into the steaming basket and you can stack them but depending on how big your basket is you might need to do it in more than one batch just depending on how many meatballs you're making and how big your basket is you look confused <laughs> okay so i have like a metal steaming pot attachment that sits yeah. on top of a pot right it's not very big i would say maybe it's got a like seven inch diameter and you're saying i can stack them in there do you put parchment paper no nope, no nope. they won't stick together because you browned them now the outside is kind of set you can just okay stick them in there. trust me wow because i have one it's a bit bigger i think maybe than yours okay but i fit all these meatballs in and at you're the just, same time. You, you just stack them up. It was, I think it was two layers or so that I did. Okay. Okay. Have faith. Yes. <laughs> you're going to just put the lid on that and let it steam away for about 40 minutes okay. or until they're cooked through. But I have found okay. that 40 minutes is a pretty good marker. Okay. If you have to do more than one batch, do the same thing again. Okay. This is where it's like, it can be a little bit time consuming. Right. But really it's inactive time when you're just letting them steam away up there, right? Yeah. And you can kind of turn the steam down so it's not boiling too hard so you don't lose all your water. And Yeah, maybe just keep an eye on it, especially if you have to do a second batch. Just check your water level. Make sure you've got enough water in there. Right. Okay. And that that's it for the meatball. Okay. What did you think of these meatballs? Okay. These meatballs are a winner. I know. These I'm are so, glad so, you like so good. I had them for lunch the next day after you delivered them and my it was a weekend day and my kids crowded around as i put together my lunch and they were like oh my god what's that and i was like mine not yours yeah go away <laughs> get lost and i didn't share any of them oh my god heather so good so good i love the water chestnuts in there i am a I big fan of the texture and what's going on with a water chestnut putting it in a meatball is like genius I know, Genius. I know. Apparently it's a classic Chinese thing. So I, I couldn't even tell you who came up with that. Maybe they've been making them this way for centuries. Who knows? I have no idea. Where do water chestnuts even grow? Like oh, where do they question. even come from? Like they're a, I don't, know. I don't want to say weird. They are a different ingredient that we don't encounter a lot. So if, if they, if it's something that's 
Asian and, and that they've been doing that for a long time, then I would assume they're an Asian ingredient that we don't really cook or encounter a lot. Yeah, I think so. In, in our cooking. So that's really cool. Okay, I just did a quick Google and it tells me uh, water chestnut is a grass like sedge native to Asia, tropical Africa, and Oceania. Mm, so it sounds okay. like it's grown in a few different areas of the world not here of course not here <laughs> and i'm going to assume without getting into too much detail that it probably grows in water right yeah it grows in marshes underwater in the mud hmm. what an go. interesting little plant it is and it doesn't have like a crazy amount of flavor or anything no i mean it's distinct you can definitely you know when you've eaten a water chestnut but it's more about the texture of it like it it, it has a slight flavor but it's not yeah. overwhelming so but good, honestly, Heather. I don't think, I think if you were to make these without the water chestnuts, it'd be like, mm, meh. It's just they wouldn't like be as good. Something about For the sure. water chestnuts, just like, it's the thing yeah. my kids always comment on too. They, they go, oh, these are the ones with the water chestnuts because they love them. Yeah, I'm really excited to get this recipe from you <laughs> because after I ate them, I was like, my kids are going to love these. Mm -hmm. And you could, if you like a sauce or something, you could almost anything it's kind of like a blank slate like you could really if you were also making a stir fry i'm sure whatever stir fry sauce oh, you use would yeah. be good on these meatballs like you could totally dress them up whichever way you like but they're so good just on their own too and they're and they're also really good with the sauce that you made <laughs> because okay. we should talk about i know <laughs> you made these meatballs and you made these little meat sausage rolls Mm -hmm. And you made this sauce. Tell me more yeah. about these meatball rolls. So I had this idea that I, as I think I talked about initially, that I wanted to see what they'd be like in a sausage roll. So I had my one sheet of puff pastry. You know, I didn't worry about what size they really were. I just kind of cut it into 12 pieces. And then a the next item to buy for Heather is a kitchen ruler. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> next thing you're going to say is tweezers or something. <laughs> we're not going yeah. there yet. We're not, we're not that far down. Not okay. yet. So then I put a, a little a scoop of the meat onto each one. I just tried to divide it equally from my cup that I had reserved when I was making the meatballs and then kind of just folded it over and pressed, put a little bit of egg on, okay. on the pastry and press it down with a fork, brush the tops of them with egg again, and then sprinkled with sesame seeds, mm. baked them in the oven according to the puff pastry box directions, which I think was... 400 degrees maybe yeah about 20 minutes just whatever the puff pastry thing says your pork is going to be good it'll be cooked and then that was it that's all i did and then i was like well i want to dip them in something so yeah i kind of made something up i hope you wrote it down as you i went. did good you did Phew. i got my little notebook here thank goodness because <laughs> if you said oh it's a bit of this and a bit of that i would have been like damn it heather i want a recipe <laughs> i'll tell you exactly what i did but but i do think it's one of those things you can adjust mm -hmm. to the way you like it the taste of it so i did honey mustard which was just a store-bought honey mustard but if you didn't have that i think you could do mustard and honey yep. and you could just make your own honey mustard i did 2.5 tablespoons honey mustard a tablespoon of sweet chili sauce and a half a teaspoon of sriracha. And I just mix that all up yeah, in your yeah, little yeah. jar. But if you like spicier, add more sriracha. If you like it more mustardy, add more mustard. I don't know. My kids thought it was good, but a little sweet. And I was mm. like, what are you talking about? What's wrong with sweet all of a sudden? <laughs> Tasted good to me. Are you my children? Yeah, I'm like, what are you talking about? We have a sweet tooth. <laughs> yeah, I sure do. Maybe they didn't inherit quite the same one that I have. <laughs> no, that was so good i loved that sauce Me i went too. back and licked it clean <laughs> like i was scraping it out with my meatballs and like scooping it mm. all out and yum 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 and i think you could just scale it up and yep. make enough like make a bigger bowl of it and serve it with your meatballs because it really was i liked it yeah. with the meatballs too yeah and just to have as a dipping sauce on the side mm. because everybody has their own sauce level preference and sometimes yeah. the kids can be fussy about that kind of thing, or even grown adults. <laughs> well, so if true. you serve that's it true. on the side and people can just kind of choose how much they want or not, like... I wasn't kidding about that we ate them while the meatballs were steaming. <laughs> so I just like, oh my God, these are good. We just like gobbled them up. And then we, I actually, 
my husband was working that day. So I, when I made the meatballs, I just put them straight into the fridge, like, okay. let them cool and then put them in the fridge to eat the next day. That was always the plan because he wasn't mm-hmm. home. So mm-hmm. we ate the sausage rolls and then nice. the next day we ate the meatballs. I do think that the meatballs, the best way to warm them up, I put them in the oven in like a casserole dish with a lid, but I honestly think the best way is to steam them again until they're warm because the best thing about them is, and the, I think it's maybe from the steaming, is that they're so moist and fluffy. And they're fluffy. Yeah. Mm. This is a nice, nice thing to have prepared, like you said, ahead of time. You can make them, keep them in the fridge. And then like if everyone's eating at different times, as we often do when someone's working late, when a kid's out in activity, when life is just a nut show, it's so nice to have that meal that like can instantly heat up Mm -hmm. and be something to eat. And it's so damn good. So tasty. And I like those little puff pastry. I've never bought store made like the puff pastry in a box and made anything really yeah because I feel like it's a slippery slope (laughs) and that then I would do nothing but eat and make puff pastry for the rest (laughs) of my life (laughs) I mean almost anything tastes good baked in puff pastry I have to say yeah pretty pretty darn good you know what I was also thinking is I'm not a big like meatball sub kind of person but what if you put these meatballs into like a Vietnamese type sub where you have like the shredded like oh. the carrot and the cucumber and the well not cilantro for you but some of us like cilantro and whatever. especially kind because of the... that mustard was so good with them oh put it right in your sandwich put it in your oh sandwich like that yeah. that would be super tasty make it a little like with a nice soft bun oh I don't know I think it would be really tasty I think we could make like 20 different ways to eat these me- meatballs oh, <laughs> totally totally just be prepared because everybody's going to gobble. You think, oh, I'm making this huge batch of meatball. <laughs> they get mm. eaten up like real quick. Yeah. It stays for long in our houses. We've, yeah. we've learned that now. If it's good, it's gone. Yeah. And it really does seem to stretch a pound of pork quite far. So if yeah. you, maybe you don't typically buy um, ground pork, maybe it's not your favorite, but pork can be cheaper. And I think the wine, the Shaoxing wine has something to do with the flavor. Like you don't really notice it's pork. I don't know. It could easily have been a chicken bee ball. Like it almost just doesn't have any distinct type of meat flavor. I'm, gl- I'm really glad you like them because they're always a hit. around. I'm so glad you shared this recipe with us. This is delish. Everybody go make it. And I mean, if you have time, yeah. double it. And put some, tuck them in the freezer and don't tell anybody you made them. And then when you're home by yourself for lunch, (laughs) pull out some meatballs. I'm serious. Don't tell your family because they'll want to eat them for dinner. They'll disappear. Sneak them in your own and try them every which way. Love them, go make them. You'll love them too. And now for the fine print. Join us over on the socials, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Pinterest, and on our website at threekitchenspodcast.com. And remember, when you like, follow, subscribe, and review, it helps more people find us. Thank you so much for listening. Don't lose it. Sometimes they come in your brain and then they fly away. Pretty sure that's everything. Comes in my brain and flies (laughs) away. (laughs) 